Right, we're starting again. Hello everyone, I'm a, I'm a video voter and I'm a software engineer at Mapillary. And today, together with my uh, colleague Chris, we will talk a bit more about uh, our um, uh, open source initiative. And uh, this time it's uh, the mobile uh, SDKs. So uh, I let Chris start with, uh, with some background of the company. Uh, not on. So how many people here are familiar with Mapillary already? Raise your hand. And a few people who are new to Mapillary, anyone? Because this slide's for you. <laughs> but let's review it really quick. So in one line, we would say Mapillary is a street-level imagery platform that scales and automates mapping using collaboration, cameras, and computer vision. So what this really means is it can be a community platform. Uh, for some people, when they think of Mapillary, they think of this map of the world with the green dots and lines, and that represents the images that are available. Uh, for others, it's more of a tool uh, specifically for one purpose. It's not the whole world, but maybe it's only your city. Uh, maybe it's only your neighborhood, and you're trying to gather specific data, and the camera is the way you do it. Uh, overall, it just it exists in many formats, and it exists for a variety of purposes. But one of the most basic parts of it is image capture. So the platform is built all around the fact that we have photos, they're geotagged, and we can turn it into something that's more useful uh, in a sequence of photos, and with all that information, than just one picture by itself. And for many people, it's just a very important method for mapping and data collection. So we'll take a look at uh, how it can be a tool and just the, the examples of how you can use it. So just a quick global overview there. Uh, you can look here just vaguely at where you came from, uh, where in the world, and probably there's a Mapillary image there or very nearby. So you'll have to visit the website to zoom in a little more, uh, or you can download the mobile application. All right, uh, yeah, uh, as Chris said, we have a lot of uh, imagery on our platform, and uh, yeah, most of the imagery is coming up from, uh, from our uh, mobile apps. Uh, we, we have currently published two, two mobile apps. Uh, one is uh, the, uh, the Mapillary Community app, and the other one is Mapillary for drivers. Uh, why are those different? So the mobile community app is open for everyone. Uh, you can explore the world. Uh, and you can also help us capture images and upload uh, to, to our system so we can uh, make uh, better maps uh, all over the world. A uh, new thing that we just added, a new feature that we just added uh, to, to the Mapillary Community app, it's, uh, it's, it's a way for you to validate uh, the data that we extract using computer vision and p possibly also uh, earn some money on the marketplace soon by, by doing that. Um, uh, the second app that we, we have, and in which we, we also have integrated uh, the Mapillary uh, SDKs, uh, it's the Mapillary for drivers. Uh, Mapillary for drivers, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a more closed app, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's used by uh, large organizations or uh, large communities that want to capture and have fresh uh, uh, image, images and uh, fresh data on, on a higher higher area and want to use uh, more than one person to, 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 to capture and uh, get the information from. Uh, you basically can uh, organize your, your capture projects. You can uh, uh, create a, a shape area that you want to capture. Uh, that shape area can, can be split it up in uh, different uh, task areas that can be assigned to one or more uh, drivers or individuals that will, will capture the area and you can manage and see the quality of, uh, of, uh, of the images and, uh, and the results that uh, computer vision will, uh, will show up uh, on, on, uh, on our data. Of course, uh, the images will, will be uploaded then to, to our, uh, to our uh, platform and with computer vision we, we extract data and you can use that data on your maps or uh, on, on your different needs. Uh, doesn't work. Yeah, it's frozen. 
So my primary work with Mapillary is on integrations. And let's see if we can get. Yep. All right, it works. Can you hear me okay? Okay. So my primary work with Mapillary is on integrations. And the most traditional way to integrate something like Mapillary and many other different sources of data, uh, imagery as a form of data, is through APIs. So from the very beginning, uh, whether you were building a mobile application or building something uh, on the web, you were looking at the documentation for the Mapillar API and trying to see how it fits into your bigger plan. So you would be trying to create an interface to authenticate a user. They log into Mapillar maybe through your app before uh, then pulling their imagery in. Uh, they would need to use Mapillar to access the GPX traces of images and sequences of images. Uh, and that interpolates them into associated images that someone captured on the same trip. And also if someone was trying to upload images to Mapillary, then again you depend on all these as separate APIs. So all the building blocks are there, but you have to piece it together yourself. And that was a problem that we sought to address here. So now what we have is more improved developer resources and more specifically the software development kits uh, for Mapillary mobile applications. Yes, and that's why we, we started to develop the mobile SDKs. Basically, API integration in, in a mobile world, it's, it's a bit harder than on the website. So, uh, yeah, for faster integration and uh, native code development, uh, we, we wanted to, to have the mobile SDKs that uh, ev anyone can use uh, to enhance Mapillary on, on their app, uh, current app or their future apps. Uh, what we what we build in uh, in in the in the SDKs we have authentication first uh, so uh, a way a simple way for you to authenticate the users uh, for uh, to to use Mapillary your users to to use Mapillary and uh, uh, have them uh, on on our system uh, you can also create sequences a sequence in in Mapillary as most of you probably already know. It's, yeah, let's say you, you're uh, having a trip from point A to point B and you're capturing along the way. Basically, that's considered uh, a sequence with all the images that you, you get from point A to, to point B with all the uh, GPS uh, and uh, sensors data that you can gather uh, into, into the images. Yeah, so uh, as I already said, yeah, you can also add the GPS sensor data to, to the images of the sequences. And of course, uh, there's a very easy way for you to upload the images on, uh, uh, on our platform. Yeah, we, we can go next. <laughs> Obvious favorite quote uh, adapted from John F. Kennedy, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. So uh, how how we uh, how how sh you should you should do that? So first thing first, uh, we have uh, two uh, SDKs, one for iOS and one for Android, uh, both built in the native code that we we, we released uh, uh, late uh, uh, in 2018. And yeah, this is the first time we actually present it. So thanks for coming for for that. That should should have been my my first uh, remark, but yeah, it's good now as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, first thing first for for both, you you need to to have a general configuration. You you ha you need to create a Mapillary user, and then go to our developer page, and create your own app. That will be used as a client ID to authenticate your users with Mapillary uh, uh, when you use the SDK. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, uh, iOS specific. Uh, you you will just. Uh, Need to install CocoaPods and use uh, use the library that we we published there. Uh, the iOS um, SDK it's uh, it's already open sourced, uh, uh, and the Android SDK it's a bit behind. We we have the the binary that you can use and just import it on on your project. The library that you can use uh, importing in your project, uh, and uh, yeah, we will uh, soon. Uh, release that open source and also in, we will integrate it with Maven uh, very, very soon. Yeah, I will let Chris uh, go on on telling you how how to create uh, your, use, uh, your uh, application. So this is a more universal thing even for web applications, but it's kind of one of the, the basic steps of getting started with any integration with Mapillary. Uh, the easiest way is visit the URL mapillary.com slash developer. 
There's a first link you'll see there. It takes you to part of your user account. Uh, so you need to be registered, and then you will register your application. So the, the dialog that you see here, uh, very straightforward. It just wants you to name the application for your own purposes. Uh, you'll put in who you are. Uh, and there's also a callback URL, which deals, of course, with the authentication. Uh, make sure it knows where to send the user back to uh, once their credentials have been validated through Mapillary. So we have a service called Mapillary Connect that handles uh, submission of a, a client ID and a user credential and then gives them back an access token. Uh, the scopes are also available there. So these have different specific purposes. Uh, some you may want to keep disabled, like user email. No one can access the email of a username. Um, maybe somebody who logs into your app with Mapillary, unless you authorize them to. So it protects that privacy information. But on the other hand, you may have someone who's capturing street level imagery in a sensitive area, uh, let's say like a government power facility. They want to keep that in a private uh, repository. So you can enable things like private upload and private read that lets someone use the app for that very specific purpose, view their own private imagery uh, without exposing it to any user in the outside world. So there's a small amount of customization allowed here, but the big picture is you get back a client ID and this client ID is your key to then unlocking all the APIs, uh, as well as our other JavaScript libraries, such as the, the Mapillary viewer. All right, so here we have uh, just uh, an example of how we are using the SDK in our Mapillary for Drivers application. So basically, uh, yeah, with one liner, you just uh, open uh, our uh, form for, for signing the user in. And then in three, four, uh, in in, uh, in uh, three small steps, you just authorize the user to 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 use uh, the SDK, and then you'll get a token back that you can use uh, for for other purposes, uh, like creating sequences and all on. So we should go next. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, in, in the left, you you uh, we have the example that we 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 are also uh, added for uh, uh, for iOS uh, SDK that we open sourced. Uh, and uh, you can you can uh, check it out and see exactly how you can integrate it. And uh, yeah, once you you log in the user, you can yeah create the sequence. You can uh, add images to the sequences. Uh, you can list those sequences. You can add uh, data to the images of the sequences. Yeah, delete them, uh, upload them. Uh, basically, that's uh, that's all that you can you can do right now. Yeah, Chris, go ahead for this. So just to give a visual example, uh, on the left here, you see the Mapillary community app in iOS. Uh, so this is the, the first app we ever created. This was the original one that Mapillary is built upon. And as you see here, it gives you access to the imagery with the navigation. Uh, that's the Mapillary JS open source library. And then it links it to a, a map. So in this case, you see a map box map in the bottom uh, that with the red marker shows the coordinates of that image and will update as the navigator scrolls. So uh, this is an example of something that you could try to recreate if you had another project idea. On the right, this is Mapillary for drivers. So it's a newer app. Uh, this one is meant more for uh, organized and collaborative capture. Maybe you have a, a city government with 10 different vehicles and you want to assign them different sectors to photograph with cameras. This helps to coordinate that. Uh, and this one was actually built uh, with the SDKs, so it's a great example also. Uh, so the main reason we're here today is to talk about the SDKs and how it is moving in the direction of open source. So. We really value letting the community contribute. Often, for us, that just means feedback on the products we create. Uh, and in these open source ones, it just gives a lot more visibility to uh, how the SDK is built from the inside out and a lot more uh, input from the community on what happens to it next. Uh, so the goal eventually is to have it be a very two-way development. Right now, Mapillary shares code. Our developers implement. Uh, the ideas and then feedback is given from the users uh, for the developers to work on more. Uh, so we're maintaining it with a very small team. 
uh, with a longer term goal of actually making it so the developers are able to work with uh, external users who also want to submit their own code and have it reviewed. Uh, so right now, it's, it's limited in that sense, but the, the open source ecosystem as a whole includes mainly uh, these SDKs, so iOS being completely open source now, uh, the Android SDK, as we mentioned, undergoing some cleanup in preparation for this. Uh, we also have the viewer that you saw, uh, Mapillar.js, which is our original open source library. And the SDKs enhance this and interact with it. So in the long term, we want to continue to make these more and more available as well as highly usable, uh, as well as flexible for all kinds of new ideas. Uh, we want to just put the power in the hands of developers uh, to make these into something that fits their purpose. And always my dream is a way I never thought of. Uh, if somebody uses it, creates something new, and you're delighted to see that uh, they invented a new purpose for something you never, never imagined before. So the open question is always, what applications would you develop with this SDK, whether it's something new or enriching something that already exists? So overall with what's next, we mentioned open sourcing the Android SDK. Uh, we want to give more specific features like direct camera access. Uh, that's something that we're still working on. Uh, different features like triggering capture during certain scenarios. For example, you could have an application for navigation that maybe automatically turns on the camera when you enter what's marked on the map as a construction zone and captures pictures of it. And therefore, you can share that with other people to know the progress of the construction. Uh, there's humanitarian scenarios where the bandwidth is limited. You can't upload 50 gigabytes of imagery. So you want to make sure the camera uh, isn't capturing until you enter maybe a flood risk zone or very specific bridges that you're trying to capture images of. Uh, and also, we'd like to kind of follow the direction of other apps, such as Fulcrum or Esri's uh, applications like Survey123 that let you enter form-based data and associate them with images. I think we're really powerful on the image capture side. And we'd love to add in new features that let you go ahead and attach text and other data to the images you're uploading. So this would be something perfect for an SDK where we just enable uh, whatever tools you need to, to decide what you want to attach to the imagery. Uh, and finally, we just want to expand the, the hardware support. So there are things like Android-based dash cams that you could link to uh, maybe a mobile phone or just even build a whole application inside of. Uh, as well as cameras like 360 degree and action cameras that you can uh, definitely tether to your mobile phone in order to make the capture and navigation simultaneous. But we have to continue expanding the support for them. As new models come out, we constantly have to reverse engineer or examine them, work with the documentation uh, to make sure we're compatible. And overall, we hope to just see more applications using these SDKs. Uh, we have some like OSM and that uh, have Mapillar integrated already and newer versions such as their iOS one that is looking at the SDK uh, for integration. And we hope that someone in this room will also come up with more ideas, be inspired and uh, continue developing, ask us questions and make use of these. So in conclusion, uh, here's the links. You can go on GitHub uh, get access to the iOS SDK, and you can download the, the Android SDK as well at this link. Uh, Ovi is on GitHub, I'm on Twitter, and of course follow Mapillar on Twitter for our latest news, and hopefully we'll have more announcements along these lines in the near future. Any questions? Thank you very much. Um, I have a question that clearly goes. Uh, you said you, there were the APIs to direct access. What if I have an application that works very well with offline map data so that I can, it, it would really integrate very well outside where you don't have connection, but it's written in Flutter. And uh, so you could create plugins for this. Is there some roadmap that considers this? Because it would make things very, very much easier in those cases, because here you have to configure for the one, for the other. And is there any idea to flutterize, create uh, some plugin of this? Not really right now. Uh, 
but uh, definitely you can use it like it is and you just just add it on top of, of your application it should work I mean uh, so you mean oh you mean you suggest to uh, use the direct APIs or to create a plugins of these two SDKs it's it's better to use the SDKs it's 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 <laughs> it, it will be faster for, for okay. integration and also it will be faster for uh, for in, in terms of the app will work faster the the, the problem just uh, in my case I'm an Android developer and so I would be able maybe to to create the Flutter plugin of the Android SDK but not of the iOS so that's kind of the issue if there is a direct API then I would be forced to use that if yeah we can we can talk more about uh, about this in a breakout session if you want I'm also an Android developer so we can we can share things out uh, gladly thank you right. any other questions No, then thanks. Thanks a lot for coming here. <laughs>